In this video, I'm gonna do something that I've never done, but I've always wanted to do. So if you're like me, you've done a few engine swaps. You pulled engines out, you put engines in with the transmission still attached. Now the hardest part usually, for me at least, is trying to get the whole transmission and engine over the core support. Especially if you're in a garage and you have limited space, the hoist can only go so far. Not to mention the RB is so long compared to the KA and the SR. And also if you have a nice painted bay, the last thing you wanna do is scratch it while going in. So what I wanna do, is make the core support removable, but in a nice way. I've seen this done a lot and I've never been a fan of it. So I've never even thought about trying to do it, but today I'm gonna make it happen. So with stuff like this, I always start by just looking at what I have to work with. What I wanna do is make a support going from the bottom of the frame rail all the way to the core support. Maybe I can use some square tubing, cut it to size, and then obviously just weld that from here to here. But this is gonna be in the way. So to understand what these mounts were originally, they were designed to create rigidity in the core support and the platform area against the frame rail, along with the bash bar mount. Welding some of the square tubing along this platform here will mimic what this is supposed to be doing and make it even stronger than it was from the factory. We got those tabs off of there and I also prepped all the metal. Here's what we eliminated into the scrap bin. Before I continue on, I want to mount the bash bar onto these mounts. They're not fully mounted in place right now, so I want to make sure that they're in the right spot when we weld everything together. And leveled. Now, we can take some of the square tubing and measure out how long we want this to be. I have drawn a blue line for about how long we want it. Maybe just a little bit longer than that. All right, I've got these cut out. Started out on the frame rail on the bottom, and then on top, kind of like this. Same with the other side. I think that looks pretty good like that. Let's just say I weld this in here and along the side of the core support right here. Then for the top, I wanna to weld a plate right here, drill a hole, and then weld a nut on top because then, think about it, if there's a nut there, this hole is already in the perfect spot that I can just put a bolt right down on it. Whoa, what? That's gotta be the biggest praying mantis. That was a backflip? Dang, dude, you got the moves. It looks like a stick. Can't they fly? I think they can fly. Go on, <laughs> walk your ass home. So now I have these two little squares with holes drilled in the center of them. And I have two nuts and two bolts. Now that we have the tops done and they're looking super nice, I wanna test fit these on the car so we can determine where we need to drill the core support for these to bolt onto. I will mention I didn't use the first mounts that I made. I ended up using a bigger diameter nut. I figured it'd be a good idea to make it just a little bit more beefy. Woo, got that beautiful hole drilled. It's not exactly where I thought it was gonna be, but I would much rather this mount be straight than to utilize this hole. So now these mounts are both tightened and into position and I like how they look. I'm going to tack weld just the bottom on both of them so that they hold their place. And I'm only tacking it right now just in case I need to move it for some reason. Now these beams are tack welded into position. So the next thing I wanna do is drill out these spot welds, which means I'm gonna need to take off the headlights. You're probably wondering why I'm drilling out the spot welds. Well, if you see this piece right here, this is like a extra bracing for the core support. So it only connects from here to here. And this bottom piece continues through the whole portion. So what I was thinking is, if I just drill out the spot welds on the edge here, and then I cut the inner piece, or that bottom piece, which is right here, then when I bolt this on, it'll sit on top with this lip so it could still look factory. But we have the wire wheel, so we're gonna grind off all of this adhesive first. 
and then we'll start drilling. And here's our good friend, Mr. Spotweld drill bit. Now that we have the spot welds drilled out, I want to make a very light cut on the back of this core support here. It's kind of hard to tell, but there's two layers here and we're only trying to grind away the inside one. We don't want to grind away this outside one. Perfecto. Okay, now we gotta do this side. We got these popped off and it's free. And it looks very, very ugly right now. And that's okay because that's just part one, getting it freed up. And if you guys remember, I have the radiator support notched for the RB fitment. So I need to install the radiator to verify how much room we have to install a gusset. So let's just drop this in real quick. With the tilt back, we do have some room to make a gusset on both sides. So I'm going to mark our limit I'm gonna say probably about right here. As for this side, honestly, right on the slice that was made. So then we'll just bridge this to here. And that'll help stiffen this up because this looks real bad like this. And I wanted to also mention that is the importance of making these support beams first because now I have the exact location to bolt this down to. And this will be nice and sturdy. You like my lighting? <laughs> So I have bolted the core support back down using these two bolts that we had just made with these mounts. And that is to verify the fitment after drilling out all the spot welds. And it looks good. So what I'm going to do is take the core support completely off now because I want to box in the lower portion here. Ta-da! Sick. Yeah, see, that'll be way nicer when mounting an engine and transmission. Whoop. Let's grab some cardboard and we're gonna line up and make this shape here and make this shape here. I'm not sure if I've mentioned this before, but all the videos and content on my channel, I film and edit myself. There's been many times where I've been out and about, either on a road trip or getting parts, and I need to stop and connect to the internet. Which brings us to today's video sponsor, NordVPN. When connecting to a free Wi-Fi, the last thing I'm thinking about or worrying about is the risk of my information getting stolen. Wi-Fi impersonators can set up fake Wi-Fi and read all of your information, which can be quite dangerous. NordVPN hides your IP address and encrypts your data protecting your information from getting seen or stolen. Having your banking information get stolen or your social media getting hacked is a total nightmare. But luckily, NordVPN is able to detect a threat before it happens. NordVPN also offers a tremendous amount of additional safety features. It's also available on all devices and super easy to use. Yes, it's really that easy. Get the exclusive NordVPN deal here, and I'll also leave it down below. And you'll be able to try it risk-free with NordVPN's 30-day money-back guarantee. It can't hurt to have it, but it can hurt if you don't. Check them out. These are coming out super sick. Loving how they look nice and smooth. And also I need to test fit the core support again. And bolt this down because honestly, this is so flimsy if I just left it like this. I really don't trust this to hold the bumper and the hood latch. Just after all the wear and tear and driving, yada yada. But what I want to do is lay a piece of metal on top of here and just to stiffen it up a little bit, give it some rigidity. And I've cut one out on a piece of cardboard of something I want to do. So it'll go something like this. Just along the top there. That'll strengthen it up. And symmetrical, so I'll flip it over. And weld that one to this side. Well, look who showed up. 
Whoa, Tim, you fixed your car and painted it silver? <laughs> <laughs> oh man, I wish. That would be cool, right? Yeah. <laughs> no, new car, um, but same car. Just a little bit different. So new body style. I got an HR motor now, no more DE boys, which oh, is that's, nice. Yeah, it's nice. Uh, but I got a lot of work ahead of me, as well as Mike does. Yeah. So uh, we're both on this uh, rebuild our cars for next season grind. Yep. Get this <laughs> going. All right, so we have mounted the core support onto the car. The bottom bolts are snug, they're not like cranked down. And we have our loose fit up here and our super loose fit over here. So what I want to do now is get our metal pieces that we just cut out and press them down where we want them to be because they do need to kind of be pressed down because this stuff's so flimsy. Oh, thank you, Tim. Of course, sir. <laughs> Look at us go. And then I'll tack weld it while it's on the car. That way it has the correct shape. Then I'll take it off the car and then fully weld what's left of it. And then I can also get to it from the bottom and really strengthen this thing up. We have our plates tack welded into position. So now I just need to take off the core support and finish welding the rest of it. <laughs> Easy peasy. <laughs> that is sweet. Right? That looks so cool that like that. That is sweet. So much more accessibility now. All that room for RB activities. Yeah. <laughs> Alright, we've thrown some welds on the bottom here. I didn't do any on the top because I want to kind of shave down the excess before we weld it all the way in. And before I welded it on the top, I wanted to mount it on the car. So we've already drilled out the holes for the mounts. So let's see how it fits now. Woo! Perfecto. Way more stable. <laughs> no bolts. <laughs> so good. I didn't even bolt the bottom in. It's already like pretty good. But yeah, so now basically what I want to do is grind away this edge so it's like more so flush with the rest of it. I purposely made this a little bit bigger than what I needed to just to make sure that it was like perfectly flush when it was on top. So now let's clean it up. Oh man, this cut looks super, super nice. And we have some new golden hardware. Ooh, Ooh. shiny. <laughs> <laughs> this will be a good before and after for you. So here's before the trim. It's all boxed up and hanging over. Kind of ugly, but functional. And this is the nice shaved one. Now I am going to weld this on here. So... All right, we got the welds done on the first side. I am going to grind these flat just so it looks really nice. I want to make it look seamless. I don't want you to be able to tell that this was done and that this core support is detachable. So now that we've got these nice and smoothed out on both sides, I want to take the core support off and finish welding all these spot weld holes on both sides just to clean it up a little bit more. That is superb. I'm sure a lot of you guys are wondering why I didn't go with a tube front or something like that. And I've just never been a fan of them or how they look. Although this car will be caged, I still like the idea of keeping it like street style. And once you put a tube front on a car, it's no longer street style, in my books at least. I don't know, I just like the look of just the stock core support, even though it is notched. It's still like a OEM-ish. It's just what I'm a fan of, at least for this build. Down the road, you never know, it might get something crazy, but... I'm just trying to build this car back to what my original goal was. The only difference this time around is that it's going to have a cage, but everything else is going to be the same goal, which is OEM plus a street car that can still get down at the track and that you can daily drive and road trip. An overall fun, reliable, unique unit. <laughs> How was that? Terrible! <laughs> Well, since Tim just bought this car, he was checking out some of his suspension and lug nut tightness and brakes and stuff like that. And then it just started downpouring. <laughs> so badly. <laughs> that was a good time. At well, least your front half is pretty dry. Oh yeah, dude, my back half though? Yeah. <laughs> it's like a clean shower. 
So I've begun welding the support beam that we made to the core support. And then also on the side here, the bash bar section to the frame rails. So that's looking pretty good. Still have to do that side still. But I want to clean up this edge a little better. It's kind of raggedy like that. But I think I'll trim this back just so it has a nice flat and straight edge. But yeah, let's get some more welding done. Well, I guess this is fine for now. I'm not dead set on keeping it like this because with it being metal to metal like this, it's not gonna be good long-term because it could just scratch the paint or coating or whatever you put on there. This is gonna work for now, but I'm definitely gonna have to come back to this and rethink of a better way to attach this. If you guys have any ideas of ways you've done this or ways to go about this, let me know. I don't know, we'll see. Hopefully I'll come up with some ideas. But I mean, that did turn out pretty cool. I'm excited to not have to lift my RB to the moon <laughs> when putting it in now. At this point in the build, I don't know if there's much more to do in the engine bay for fabrication, that is. I even went ahead and filled in the bottom here because this was all open. As well as the other side. And man, this stuff came out super nice. Yeah, that turned out really good. And I also went ahead and started stitch welding some of the plates on the top, just to reinforce it a little bit. I'm still gonna have to grind off all the paint over here and do some more. This engine bay is starting to look like it needs an RB in there, just to test fit everything once more. I think I'm long overdue for a sweeping. I don't know if you can really tell in the camera, but we have quite a bit of metal built up. <laughs> oh my gosh. And a clean workspace definitely helps you have a clear mind and it'll just let the creativity flow. But sometimes when you're just in the zone, it's good to have all your tools just out and scattered if you're just getting lost in it. You know what I mean? Like, like there's people that do amazing things, but you look at their workshop and it's just like tools all over the place and you can't even find a single thing. There's no organization. Some people can work like that. And I can relate only when I'm like in the zone, but after each step, I like to clean up my tools, clean up the workspace, because then when you come in the next time, you'll have a fresh start. And there's nothing like a fresh start. But yeah, there it is. And in case you were wondering, this is how much metal dust I just swept up. Look at that mountain. <laughs> just from grinding and cutting and welding. All the fun stuff. I didn't think it'd be this heavy, but that's a good five pounds or so of just metal dust. <laughs> Thanks for sticking around. This has been really fun building this engine bay. I hope you guys learned a thing or two or maybe got inspired to do something like this for your own car. Till next time.